Today, my father told me he had stage four liver cancer and only had three months. I immediately broke down in the middle of the street and began sobbing like a baby. Even though his love for me had been questionable all these years, my love for my father was absolute. When I finally managed to look at him, my dying father looked at my tears for him in disgust. You've always been a punk ass bitch. Mess with Rosa? Yeah, isn't that great? It's a little harsh. Yeah, but it's real though. First time I cried in front of my father was at his funeral when I was 10. What? My dad thought crying was weak. The year before he passed, I got a role in The Wiz, and he told me real men don't do theater. Yeah, I had to turn it down. Instead, uh, help to build sets. Because real men are supposed to build shit. You must be terrible not being able to be your true self. Yeah, I would never restrict my kids. You want kids? I, I, I thought you said you didn't want kids. I never said I didn't want kids. I said I didn't think I was ready. You don't want kids? I thought you said you wanted kids. I did, just... Things change. What change? I'm, I'm turning 40 this year. And with my mom gone, I just, I don't know if I want my kids to grow up without a grandmother. My mother's still alive. Yeah, well, they won't know my mom. Wait, are you, are you saying that we should have kids? We in this, right? Yeah. So why don't we just do it then? Because mm. you were rehearsing for your audition mm. on Monday. Mm. We can rehearse for the production of Corey Jr. <laughs> uh -uh. I'm going over my pitch for tomorrow. I've been going over your pitch all week. <sighs> okay. Maybe I could just wing it. Mm Sorry I'm late. I had a flat and I had to call roadside assistance. This is our last chance to rehearse before the production meeting this afternoon in exactly an hour. I know. I didn't plan to get a flat tire. Look, I, I think we're in a good place with the pitch. You think we're in a good place? Yeah, I went over it like a hundred times last night. We need to go over it again. If you insist, look, I think we'll be fine. We can just wing it. Wing it? Yeah, we rehearsed it for like a week now. It's time to just do it and trust ourselves. Why'd you have to call roadside assistance? I told you I had a flat tire. Where's Corey? Your boy can't change a tire. I thought we were going over the pitch. That's the problem with these boys out here pretending to be men when they don't even have basic man skills. What, what, wait, what men skills? There's certain things a man should know how to do. Changing a tire is one of them. That's sexy. That's fact. Why can't a woman do it? Because it's a man's job, and if you have a man, there's certain things he should be doing. That he doesn't even open a door for you. <laughs> I got it. Let the man open the door. You can be independent and still be taken care of. Allow a man to spoil you a little bit. I can do anything a man can do, including opening my own door. Men and women are not equal, so they shouldn't be doing the same shit. Look, I thought we were going over the pitch. Admit it, your boy's soft. You know, you're jealous. I know how to change a tire. I lie on your oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
where is Corey? Shouldn't he be helping you with this stuff? He's rehearsing for Maxwell's play all weekend. Oh, he got the part? Not yet. Auditions are next week. Hmm. So, you think that Corey should be doing more man stuff too? No, too? Yeah, I was talking with Sam and, and he was saying that he should... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. you're still talking with Sam? Well, no, we, we work together, so I have to work with him. No, we, we've moved past that. I mean, with everything that happened with Leslie... <laughs> yeah, I know. She's still not over that. I know, and she... Wait a minute. How do you know she's still not over it? We've been hanging out. Well, you haven't had time to hang out with me? What did Sam say? Well, yesterday I had a flat tire and I had to call roadside assistance because Corey doesn't know how to change a tire. <laughs> what is so funny? Uh, that's rich. I mean, just, come on. I'm, I'm gay and I can change a tire. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I, it's the first time that you. You know, I, I have rehearsed that moment for years. I was going to tell you, and it, it always seems so hard. Look how easy that was, huh? <laughs> I, 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 like, I didn't, I didn't mean to. No, I know. I'm, I'm happy you finally know. I. I've wanted to tell you that since the first, first time. The first time? Remember when I went to that convention in D.C. a week after graduation? Yeah, you were engaged to Ashley. Yeah. The last night of the convention, I met Greg at a panel. And we went out to dinner to discuss the Black Lawyers Association, but we ended up talking until 6 the next morning. I mean, the entire night felt so comfortable and right. I never felt that way with Ashley or any woman. Well, what did you feel? Safe. Yeah. He understood my dreams, my desires, my heart. I mean, there's so many times that night, I, I wish I could, could just freeze time, you know, just so I, I wouldn't have to define it or, or hide it. What happened? <laughs> Got on the plane the next day. I just decided I was going to pretend that it never happened and get back to being the man I was expected to be. A successful, straight, black man. Did you guys keep in touch? No, you know what? Uh, a few days before I wrote that letter, I started to think about that night. And with you know, Victoria pressuring me to marry her, I, 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 I just needed. So I um, looked him up on Facebook and found that he had killed himself just a week before. I'm sorry. You know, a man like Greg, who was out, couldn't survive his truth. How am I going to live with this? It doesn't matter if you're gay. Of course it matters, Steph. It, you know, I, I've always been the black guy, right? You know, in, in high school, I was a black kid who was smarter than 345 white students and graduated valedictorian. And, and in college, I was the black guy who acted white. At work, I'm the black man who made partner at 33. I, I, I do not want to add gay to that identity. But if it's who you are, it just... Is it? 
I have been playing this role of a successful black male for so long I have perfected it. I'm comfortable with it. I believe it. This is who I am. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready to switch roles and become Malcolm Montgomery the homosexual. I'm, I'm much more than that stuff. But it, it's your truth. I don't know if my reality can accommodate my truth. So who are you gonna be? Moonlight shine so I haven't decided yet. Bright in the early light. I'm not perfect, but I wanna be authentic. For years, I've been memorizing lines that mute my voice. I've become comfortable performing on a stage of expectations instead of truth. And I've depended on the limelight to guide my steps, but it has illuminated a dark reflection of rooted insecurity and silent pain. I'm not perfect, but I want to be accomplished. I want to feel the applause from a flawless performance of success. I want to feel the love from standing ovations of respect and approval. I want to give encores that guarantee a stable place for me. But the spotlight keeps highlighting the weight of expectations that limit my potential and suffocate my perfection. I'm not perfect, but I want to be whole. We spend our entire life on a stage of acceptance, waiting to give the performance we've rehearsed over and over again. Oh, we study the character. We move like the character. Oh, we breathe the character. We become the character. And each time you perform to a sold out audience, you sell out a piece of your soul. You step forward at the final curtain call, hoping to validate the sacrifice. But eventually, you realize applause wasn't for you. It was for the performance you perfected. I am grateful for performances. Moonlight, so shine.